And the next item of business is a debate on motion 13664 in the name of Shirley Ann Somerville on gender representation on public boards amendment Scotland bill at stage three. As members will be aware, the presiding officer is required understanding orders to decide whether or not, in her view, any provision of a bill relates to a protected subject matter, that is, whether it modifies the electoral system and franchise for Scottish parliamentary elections. In the case of this bill, in her view, no provision of the Gender Representation on Public Boards Amendment Scotland Bill it relates to protected subject matter. Therefore, the bill does not require a supermajority to be passed at stage three. And I call on Shirley Ann Somerville to speak to and move the motion. Cabinet Secretary, around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. I move the motion in my name. Uh, as we have discussed before, this bill seeks to remove Section 2 Definition of Women from the Gender Representation on Public Board Scotland Act 2018. This follows decisions of the Inner House of the Court of Session, which were effective from the 19th of April 2022. The Court decided that the Section 2 definition was out with the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament, was not law and accordingly had no legal effect. At that time, our Council told the Court that we would remove the redundant definition from the 2018 Act. This bill, if passed, will provide clarity by removing the redundant definition from the statute book to ensure that no one is misled. Removing the definition will eliminate the possibility of any confusion for readers of the 2018 Act who are unaware of the Court's decision in 2022. I appreciate that bringing forward such a small bill is unusual. We did, as members will know, look at other planned legislation and did not find a suitable vehicle that could take this forward. Further, as members also know, the necessary change could not be made through secondary legislation. I was pleased to read the committee's stage one report on the bill, and they were satisfied that it provides a small technical fix to clear up the statute book, and we are content to recommend that the Parliament agrees to the general principles. The committee also noted that the majority of those who responded to the calls for views also agreed with the general principles of the bill. Similarly, at stage two, the committee were content that the bill should proceed, and I would like to thank the committee for their work on this bill. I would note that there have been no amendments to the bill at any stage, which indicates to me, certainly, that members understand that this is a small technical fix to clear up the statute book. The bill does not change the policy intention of the 2018 Act. We still need the boards of our public bodies to better reflect the population of Scotland. Thank you, presiding officer. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. I should have invited members wishing to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons um, now or as soon as possible. Uh, Megan Gallagher has already done it, so I will reward her by calling her um, for around six minutes, Ms Gallagher. Thank you very much, Residing Officer. And the Cabinet Secretary is absolutely spot on. It is a short bill. However, I think the contents of it can be seen as frustrating because we're spending parliamentary time today fixing yet another mess that was created by the Scottish Government in the last session. The previous SNP Government changed the definition of a woman when they passed the Gender Representation on Public Boards Act in 2018. The definition that was contained within the 2018 Act wrongly confused two distinct protected characteristics in a separate law those of a biological woman and people who are transgender. The nature of protected characteristics is also a reserved matter, so the definition of women within the 2018 Act impinged on matters not devolved to the Scottish Parliament. Changing the definitions of a protected characteristic is, of course, not permitted in law and led to the conclusion that the respected Act was outside legislative competence. Presiding officer, had it not been for women's groups challenging this Act, this amended bill would not be before us today. I am pleased that we have fierce, resilient and brave women right across Scotland who will not tolerate their rights being eroded. They have challenged this government over their policies and decision-making and continue to be unapologetically vocal in their fight to protect women and girls. It was for Women Scotland who brought the judicial review on the Scottish Government's new definition of a woman, and the Court of Inner House ruled on 18 February 2022 that it was out with the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament as it amended the definition of protected characteristics in the Equality Act 2010. 
Since the 2018 Act could not be amended quickly, the Court issued an order which declared the definition be formally removed from the 2018 Act and the statutory guidance. This meant that the Act has been operating within the Equality Act definition of a woman since 19 April 2022. I believe that the outcome determined by the Court shows that biological sex matters. The bill that we are discussing today removes the unlawful definition from the face of the bill, and that is welcome. And it is, of course, a step in the right direction, but it isn't one that the SNP government reached on its own. The SNP are continuously tying themselves in knots when it comes to their understanding of protected characteristics. Through the Gender Recognition Reform Bill, they tried to create a hierarchy of protected characteristics pitting groups against each other. We are still feeling the aftermath of this deep division that has been sown by the Scottish Government over issues such as self-ID. Mm -hmm. Women witnessing their hard-won rights being diluted and feeling that their legislative protections are worth less than other vulnerable groups. This Government has not supported them, has not engaged with them and has dismissed their concerns as being not valid. That is not how you create equality. And I think it's a sad reflection that women feel the need to challenge this government to make sure that their rights are upheld. Lessons need to be learned from this. And that brings me on to the impact of these never-ending legal challenges. Hundreds of thousands of pounds have already been squandered by the SNP over gender-related matters. Whether it be judicial reviews or the Gender Recognition Reform Bill, we are seeing a repeat pattern. And in my view, it needs to stop. It creates more division, and I am sure we agree that taxpayers' money could be better spent elsewhere. So here's my asks of the Scottish Government today. Accept the rulings and stop meddling in matters that are reserved. Don't stray into areas that makes legislation unlawful. And please listen to women's groups. All they want is for their rights to be protected and respected. There is nothing controversial in any of that. Presiding officer, given that we are here today because of the hard work and efforts of For Women Scotland, I will end my contributions today by thanking them for their hard work, their tenacity and their expertise. They are the women who wouldn't wished. For Women Scotland turned six years old today, and may I congratulate them as well on their campaigning success so far. We in the Scottish Conservatives will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder with them on these issues. And I'll finish by asking them directly to keep powering on to protect the rights of women and girls here in Scotland. Thank you. Thank you. And I now call on Paul O'Kane. Up to five minutes, please. I am very grateful, Presiding Officer, and I am pleased to open uh, for Scottish Labour in this debate. And I do not intend uh, to speak for too long, uh, but uh, I do want to offer some remarks. I commented in the Stage 1 proceedings on this bill that uh, the Equalities, Human Rights and Civil Justice Committee, of which I am a member, had indeed produced the smallest Stage 1 report I think I have seen in the Parliament and reached the conclusion that this bill should proceed in order to tidy uh, the statute book. And at Stage 2, there were no amendments for the Equalities Committee to consider. And indeed, this afternoon, in a rare occurrence, we have no amendments to the bill at Stage 3. So I think it is clear there is consensus around uh, moving the bill forward, indeed, to take the action that is required uh, to ensure that the statute book reflects um, the law, because uh, actually we have a bill before us that seeks to um, ensure that uh, the, the, the statute book reflects, as I have said, uh, the legal judgment that was handed down um, in the Court of Session. Um, I do think there are a number of things we should take time to reflect on this afternoon as we uh, bring this bill to its uh, conclusion. Uh, indeed, that, um, as already has been outlined, um, that we are here because of a legal judgment that has been passed down uh, on the original Act. And, and sometimes uh, of late, I feel that uh, this has become a more common situation. Indeed, we could look to um, some of the challenges around uh, bringing UNCRC incorporation to its conclusion and other uh, issues where the Scottish Government and Parliament collectively needs to be better at ensuring that legislation does not actually end up in the courts and that we are producing good legislation at every stage and we are ensuring that scrutiny of that legislation is well considered uh, and well done so that indeed we do not end up in legal challenge. Um, 
I also think it is worth, um, at this stage in the proceedings, reiterating the importance of that original legislation as passed. And indeed, I made some comments on that in my uh, contribution at stage one uh, of the bill. Scottish Labour uh, fully supported the Gender Representation on Public Boards Act. I was not a member of the Parliament uh, when the bill passed in the form that we are now obviously seeking to rectify in terms of uh, the statute book. But I think everybody would want to recognise that the, the Act, as is, um, is an important step on the journey to uh, ensuring uh, better gender parity and increasing the representation of women in public life. Um, and of course, we know that this bill um, that we're taking through uh, won't change anything that's happening on the ground because the definition in the 2018 Act has been defunct since Lady Dorian's initial judgment and the Scottish Government's revised guidance has been in effect since its introduction and was uh, subsequently affirmed by the Court. So given that the Act has been in effect um, with revised guidance since those judgments, I think it would be good to hear from the Government what assessment it is making of the impact of the original Act uh, and whether or not it is indeed living up to its policy the intent, because I think we would all want to see uh, the original Act ensure that it is meeting that policy intent of creating that greater parity. And I was reflecting this morning, presiding officer, uh, in speaking to colleagues that um, we are still falling short in so many areas uh, on this in public life. And um, just because there is legislation there for public boards doesn't mean that we always get it right in every sphere of life to ensure gender balance. Indeed, changes today in this parliament to um, the Public Audit Committee means that we now have five male members of that committee and three male substitute members of that committee. So it's incumbent on all parties who are represented on the Bureau to reflect on how we show leadership in this chamber and in this parliament and how we have greater parity uh, in the decisions on committees that we make in this parliament and lead by example. And I'm sure uh, everyone in the room, business managers in the room indeed, will be reflecting on that, as I'm, I'm sure you will also, uh, presiding officer. So I, I don't intend to detain the chamber for much longer in this opening uh, speech, and I don't intend to relitigate re um, to any large degree those old debates. But I do think it is our job as responsible legislators uh, to consider the judgments of the court, to respect them, and to ensure that we have a tidy statute book to prevent any future uh, confusion. So, presiding officer, similar to the brevity of the bill, I will leave my remarks there. I'm very grateful. Thank you. And I now call on Maggie Chapman. Thank you, presiding officer. I would like to thank everyone who has contributed to this bill reaching stage three today including my fellow committee members, SPICE researchers, Scottish Government officials, the Bill team and civil society organisations. There has sadly been a certain amount of misunderstanding about what this legislation does and why it has been introduced. As we have heard, all this Bill does is to amend the Gender Recognition on Public Board Scotland Act 2018 by removing a three-line definition of the word woman in section two of the Act. No more. The passing of this Bill is not a victory for any anyone or any ideological position. This amendment follows decisions by the Court of Session, decisions which specifically did not say that the definition was wrong. All they said that it, that it was outside the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament, on the ground that protected characteristics are a matter reserved to the UK Parliament in Westminster. We might very well think that that is a pity, that the devolution settlement is so inconsistent as to place human rights within our competence and equalities out with it. We might also think it more than a pity that the rights and well-being of our transgender friends, colleagues, neighbours and relatives, which have been so much better protected here, must be subject to the toxic scapegoating of, we scapegoating of Westminster and media discourse. Yet again, it seems that independence will be the only way to secure a truly fair and inclusive Scotland. But this bill is not about those issues, important though they are. It is simply, as the committee report notes, a technical fix. It wasn't strictly essential, for the definition has had no legal effect since April 2022, as Paul O'Kane has already outlined. But it has been introduced in order to bring the formal statute book up to date, to provide clarity and to prevent any potential confusion. The use of a standalone bill to make this amendment might seem disproportionate, but we are assured that there were no powers in the 2018 or any other Act which would allow the change to be made by way of regulations. I and my Scottish Green colleagues will therefore be voting in favour of this bill at decision time and as a matter of legislative clarification. We stand, as always, in solidarity with transgender and non-binary people across Scotland and beyond and continue to strive for a future we can all be proud to share. Thank you.
Thank you. I now call on Ash Regan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Predictably, the Cabinet Secretary continues to downplay the importance of today's amendment bill. However, this is a crucial step to align the Act with the Court of Session ruling that the Scottish Government's redefinition of women was out of the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament and therefore not law. The Gender Representation on Public Boards Act 2018 was this Government's misguided attempt to redefine women ahead of self-ID becoming law in Scotland. But of course, self-ID is not law in Scotland. So what has the government actually done to clarify that self-identifying as a woman is not enough to be eligible for a woman's place on a public board? And are we now reliant on small, self-funded campaigns and policy groups like For Women Scotland and Murray Blackburn Mackenzie, some of whom are in the gallery with us today, to be the Parliament's unofficial revising chamber? If so, is it not more prudent for the public purse, for the Scottish Government to listen to them during the legislative process, rather than to respond to them in the court to their judicial reviews. I have repeatedly called for competency in government to raise the bar in this parliament to rebuild that fragile public trust. But we can only do that when lessons are learned and acted upon and this unlawful definition of women was not in the bill when it was first introduced to Parliament. It was added later, at stage two, following the Equality and Human Rights Committee's stage one report. And I have to say, presiding officer, it's very concerning that such a core parliamentary committee does not understand the Equality Act of 2010. As a Parliament, we can and we should learn and improve our committee stage by listening widely to those who want to contribute to it. And I'm very disappointed that the government is continuing to show contempt for half of the population of Scotland by not admitting it has made this mistake and then not apologising for it. And if the government is still struggling, I'll clear it up for them now. A woman, a woman is and always has been an adult human female. Thank you. I now call on Shirley Ann Somerville to wind up. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, as has been mentioned uh, by uh, a number of members in the Chamber today, uh, this bill, and I clarify once again, is a technical fix to clear up the statute book to remove the redundant definition of a woman from the 2018 Act. This was due to the Court's decision which was based on a decision of the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament. Uh, there has been a, a slight a, a rewriting of history uh, around actually what happened when the initial bill was going through. So can I, uh, just for the record, presiding officer, point to the fact that the 2018 Act was passed by a large majority within uh, the Scottish Parliament. Indeed, all the votes against uh, this uh, bill for gender representation on public boards came from the Conservatives. I would note that the definition of women was added to the bill in the 2018 by a stage two amendment, uh, not a Scottish Government uh, amendment, uh, but an amendment that followed through in stage two. That amendment was agreed unanimously by the committee, including Conservative members. Notwithstanding that, of course, the Conservatives voted against passing the bill itself. Paul O'Kane raises a very important point as he mentions uh, the need for Scottish Government and non-Scottish Government amendments uh, to be live to the challenge of where legislative competence sits, because this is a, a complex um, issue, presiding officer, and one which we must be live to. I'm particularly thoughtful uh, of uh, that, uh, given the fact that this government uh, remains committed to the Human Rights Bill, uh, which will indeed present challenges once again around legislative competence as we seek to push the boundaries as far as we can uh, to protect rights here in Scotland. 
And that's a very important aspect that we must uh, continue to look at. Uh, and I hope, in all sincerity, it is something uh, which the Scottish Government can work with uh, an incoming uh, Labour Government on, should they be successful in the election, about what we can do to ensure that this Government, this Parliament, as it makes decisions around important aspects around rights, uh, we can work together with a UK Government to ensure uh, that we uh, test where the legislative competence boundaries are, and then if changes need, need to be made uh, to allow us, for example, uh, to further improve uh, on the rights, whether it be for children, uh, disabled adults and children uh, or other groups, then we can do that together. And I would uh, certainly look forward uh, to that change of approach. He also mentions the very important aspect around the policy intent of the original bill. He's quite right to do so, and we are seeing progress. Uh, but uh, as, as he and I, I, I think, would agree on, uh, it's not enough, and it's not quickly enough. And we, uh, again, need to work together. He gives examples about what's happening in Parliament, but there are others, of course, across society, the public sector and the private sector, uh, where more needs to be done. But with that, presiding officer, I would uh, simply urge members uh, to allow this bill uh, to pass uh, today and for that technical fix to be undertaken uh, so that we can ensure that the legislation that we have on the statute books <coughs> is uh, clear and uh, without misunderstanding. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the debate on Gender Representation on Public Boards Amendment Scotland Bill at Stage 3. It is now time to move on to the next item of business. and There is one question to be put as a result of today's business. And I am minded to accept a motion without notice under Rule 11.2.4 of Standing Orders that decision time be brought forward to now, and I invite the Minister for Parliamentary Business to move the motion. Move, President Officer. Thank you, Minister. And the question is that decision time be brought forward to now. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And the question is that motion 13664 in the name of Shirley Ann Somerville on gender representation on public boards amendment Scotland bill be agreed. And as this is a motion to pass the bill at stage three, the question must be decided by division. So there will be a short suspension to allow members to access the digital voting system.